one thing. Joe, what's the one thing that you want people who are challenged by pain to know about? I want them to reflect on their own situation and whether they uh, prefer themselves to continue relying on short-term pain relief. You know? Because that's what the majority of people suffering from pain uh, do. They, they continue to rely on short-term short -term painkillers and that can be all kinds of sort, uh, all kinds of uh, short-term pain killers and i'm not talking about drugs in itself I'm, I'm talking about drugs in itself but that's not the only thing I'm, I'm referring to i'm referring to all kinds of passive treatments all kinds of things that they can do to somehow get uh, and and apply a real passive coping strategy uh, relying on on uh, hands-on manual therapy, relying on dry needling, relying on massage therapy, uh, acupuncture, uh, all kinds of short-term painkillers. That's, that that's what we call it uh, in the clinic uh, when we're treating uh, pain patients. And of course, it's not us deciding what they should do. It's, it's them deciding, you know, but we, we discuss it with them and, and we explain to them that, that it's, it makes sense for them to to, to think that those therapies are a relief to them because in most cases they are, but only in the short term. And when you confront a patient with that, that it's, it's only a short term pain relief and it doesn't make them better in the long term, they, they support that idea. They, they acknowledge the fact that it's only a short term pain relief that they get from these types of treatments and that in the long term it's probably making the situation worse because it's preventing them to invest in uh, long-term pain relief and even probably more important than long-term pain relief is getting the control back in their own life and increasing their quality of life. And there's only one way to do that and that is investing in their lifestyle. And of course, investing in their lifestyle is a highly individual uh, tailored Thing because not all chronic pain patients have the have the same lifestyle, and of course their lifestyle changed because of their chronic pain as well. They they, they reduce the amount of physical activity. They often try to change their diet because they are trying to anticipate on what kind of uh, food is is increasing or decreasing their pain again in the short term which is not a good which is not a good idea uh, they often uh, develop sleep problems making their sleep uh, a big issue which is aggravating or at least sustaining their chronic pain problem so their uh, lifestyle is a big issue but it's always highly individually different so it needs to be tailored individually and that's why uh, therapists are out there to to coach them to assist them in getting uh, or adopting a much more adaptive uh, lifestyle to to combat their chronic pain problem and and the 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 main thing about uh, about adopting a more healthier lifestyle is uh, increasing their quality of life and getting control on their life because also the passive treatments, the short-term painkillers are not, uh, uh, are not allowing them to control their own life. And that's, that's a huge thing for chronic pain patients. And that's also something they should um, know from the beginning that if they change from short-term painkillers to long-term control in their own life and, and to, to investing in by investing in a lifestyle change that's that can only get you can only get results from that in the long term uh, but of course the two go hand in hand it's not that they can continue with the short-term painkillers and also start investing in lifestyle theoretically that's possible but in 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 uh, in real life and also in in the real life of patients with with chronic pain that's often not realistic because it will it requires too much efforts for them because even though many of the short term painkillers are 
uh, are passive treatments, it still takes a lot of efforts to, to make your appointment with the therapist, to, 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 to go and see the, the therapist, and to also recover from the treatment in, in itself. Uh, and uh, in the long term, that's not making them uh, much better and often makes the situation worse. We didn't mention stress uh, yet, but stress is a big thing, and it's often... Um, uh, uh, well, it, patients often think when they hear about stress, they sometimes get uh, like a bit scared that you're thinking that it's all in their head and it's a mind thing. But stress is is a, is a biological thing in in itself. You know, with with a lot of hormones produced in in response to uh, action taken by the brain. I'm just referring to the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis as one of the major uh, stress axes in our body. And in many patients with chronic pain we see that this uh, stress axis is no longer functioning properly uh, and of course in those patients their only solution is to get them on a stress management program often as part of a lifestyle approach and those kind of stress management programs are out there in, in included in behavioral therapy uh, programs like cognitive behavioral therapy or acceptance and commitment therapy but they can also access stress therapists or therapists uh, who are um, uh, focusing really on, on teaching them um, stress management skills. Many physios are able to do that. So it's, it's, it's out there, you know, but uh, patients should have an open mind and not think of those type of therapies as just being a psychological treatment because they have a, a very strong physiological uh, background and foundation. Mm. Yeah. So it's a, it's a gradual um, progression from short-term treatments across to long-term treatments, but should, do they need to have shifted their focus away from um, pain intensity and, and on to function or is there any um, shifts in mindset that are required? Yeah, that's that's a very good one. And uh, I think the, the main thing there is to, to change and increase their understanding about pain. That's very key to making that switch. And that's also uh, the one thing that is needed uh, to make the right decision because we're never telling patients, okay, you should do this or shoot that. No, it's, it's up to them to make the decision. And we always give choices to them. And what we do in our clinic is the first thing we do is, is we explain pain to them. Explaining pain uh, and explaining that a, a chronic pain is not just a purely psychological thing, but it's a, it's a physiological problem, including often hypersensitivity orchestrated by the brain uh, and other uh, issues, including the, the malfunctioning of many of the uh, stress uh, response uh, systems. And as soon as they get that, then we provide the options for them in terms of treatments. And when we ask them, why are you seeing me as a therapist? They typically, all, all of them say, I want pain relief. But then I, uh, I, I ask a second question. I ask them, okay, but let's Let's imagine that tomorrow you wake up and you don't have any pain. What will you do differently tomorrow as compared to today? The and then they talk about how they will organize their life differently and what kind of activities, fun activities that they would do instead of today. And then of also you know what I expect in terms of increased quality of life. And then you can start to focus from the early beginning uh, on quality of life. And also you get the more functional limitations straight away as well. And the most important, the most significant functional limitations that the patient has in his or her life are, uh, are interviewed this way, are assessed this way in a much more comfortable way. And also in a way that creates hope to the patient. Mm. Thank you so much for your time, Joe. It's been excellent. It's my pleasure. Then I'm going to close the window here because sometimes if a car passes by, that gives you uh, some, some additional uh, sound. So let's cut back on that.